One of the most important and valuable industries that LLMs are massively disrupting is software engineering. So initially we thought co-pilots and AI assistants would help developers be way more productive and efficient, but it's quickly becoming clear that since coding LLMs have largely replaced a huge portion of entry-level software engineering positions, I have to wonder how much time I have before I'm replaced as a software engineer. So why am I so worried? Basically, StarCoder 2 was released today from Big Code, and it builds on top of StarCoder 1, but in a massive, massive way. Basically, across five different benchmarks that are highly regarded as the best for benchmarking coding models, this model is now winning by a clear margin. It's been released in three different versions, 3 billion, 7 billion, and 15 billion parameters, has a 16,000 token context window, supports over 600 plus programming languages, and could also be used with local copilots, which means if you're using Zed and GitHub Copilot, you can basically plug this in right away. It also employs some really cool approaches like grouped query attention and sliding window attention and uses a commercially friendly license. So I'm really excited to talk about this today and let's get into how quickly I'll be replaced. Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. StarCoder models have been really interesting for a lot of reasons due to their performance and their attributes relative to other larger LLMs that also happen to do coding. Basically, what sets these models apart is how they're trained. And the most important aspect of StarCoder is that it's built on top of a data set called the Stack V2, which is basically the largest code data set, which itself represents over 900 billion tokens. Now, what's interesting is you might ask, well, where does the other 3.1 trillion tokens come from that they claim to train this model on? Well, what those come from are what are called repo level information data sets. And for those of you who don't know how software engineers work, we all work within a tool called Git, which um, for instance, GitHub is a tool that wraps around Git, which is a tool we use to track changes, updates, and modifications to all the code we use. It also lets multiple people work on one piece of code without stepping on each other. And part of why I think Google's Gemini 1.5 model is so good at coding, especially when it comes to ingesting entire code bases, is because Google has the biggest data set of code changes made by the best software engineers for some time at scale. And individual changes like this show fixing bugs, they show improving functions, they show removing code that was written improperly or was too long for what it really had to do. And all of these are, for good reason, tagged with really explicit comments and descriptions of what they do. And the idea there was to help engineers understand what was going on and understand why changes were made. Um, a big part of software engineering is called review. And that's when I submit changes and, and another engineer has to double check my work and sometimes even add more comments. So the majority of this Stack V2 data set is information like that. And that's why this is so incredibly powerful when you train a large language model on it. And it's why sites like Stack Overflow are actually considering packaging and selling the company as a whole for its data to then be used to train something instead of rethinking the company in total. Yeah, so that's why this model, I believe, is so immensely powerful and concise. And I think it's interesting when we look at models that kind of try to do one thing really well. Obviously, if you wanted this model to write a poem, it probably could. It would be a shame to waste some of the time used on the roughly 1,000 H100 GPUs used to train this model to be writing poetry with StarCoder 2, if you ask me. So yeah, it's really good at coding, but how good is it? And to be frank, it's really, really good. So we are looking at the 15 billion parameter, 3 billion parameter, and 2 billion parameter, which they also call small coder 2. And it's pretty incredible what this is capable of. Generally speaking, across the board, star coder is far more performant than Llama 2. And there are a few other kind of coding optimized models that approach its size, but its size at 15 billion parameters is something we really haven't seen before. The closest would have been Code Llama. 13b and the previous version of StarCoder, not to mention DeepSeek Coder 7b, which came out just a few weeks ago, and at the time was seen as the, the next kind of state-of-the-art step forward for coding models. So the five benchmarks that we're looking at here are Human Eval Plus, Crux Eval 1, DS1000, which is a data science benchmark, GSM 8K, PAL, and RepoBench V1.1. And it's a really curious thing to compare here. Now, what I will say is the capabilities of these models when compared are pretty interesting, even when compared to models as large as DeepSeek Coder 33B. 
and Code Llama 34B. So what's crazy here is in a lot of cases, StarCoder 2 15B is actually more performant than models nearly twice its size. And this is a direct correlation with quality of the data it was trained on. Previously, there were a lot of people who thought that using textbooks for programming or textbooks for math were a great way to generate synthetic data to train these models on. And it's clean enough, but what you lack is a notion of what quality is in, ter in terms of how a model would quantify that and why concise outputs should be weighted over long running outputs, even if long running outputs in certain cases are more verbose and easier to follow. One thing that I think is gonna start to get really hard with these models is teaching machines that optimizing to a point that code isn't human readable is not necessarily the optimal output, even if in theory, it's the best performing code with the fewest lines. This is something that we already encounter with compilers and compilers are, are already pretty good at. Granted, you have to feed them code, but this is why in theory, no one has trained a compiler um, using a machine learning model or an AI model yet, but I think we might get there. Basically because compilers are in theory, the best at taking existing code, making it smaller, and turning it into assembly, which is completely unreadable for any human, regardless of your IQ. But yes, in theory, it is the most optimized and it understands kind of what you want to get at. So the benchmarks are pretty incredible. No one is surprised there. Now, how does Big Code describe StarCoder 2? So they describe StarCoder as a family of open LLMs, keyword being open, which Mistral seems to have missed in their last uh, release for code and comes in three sizes, 3B, 7B, and 15B. Again, trained on 4 trillion tokens with 600 programming languages. Now, the context window is 16,000 tokens wide with a sliding window of 4,096 tokens. And the concept of a sliding window is relatively new, but it's cool to see it in this model. And if you've watched the show Silicon Valley, the funny thing is the fill in the middle uh, approach here is actually surprisingly close to middle out just when applied to training LLMs and not compression algorithms. And another big thing here, which should make you really excited about NVIDIA and buying more NVIDIA stock, which is not my financial advice, is the fact that this was trained end-to-end -end on NVIDIA hardware with NVIDIA Nemo and NVIDIA Accelerated Infrastructure. So basically saying they used a full stack NVIDIA stack to train this model. And if you wanna see um, how that might be done without NVIDIA, we're actually putting out a video about the tiny box which is George Hotz's uh, non-NVIDIA approach to training at scale. So again, the benchmarks are very, very impressive. And the Stack V2 is pretty interesting. So obviously the Stack V2, which is the data set used, is basically 10 times the size of the previous model. Uh, the deduplicated version as well is nearly 10 times the size. And the training data set is, again, Massive. And what's cool is the actual source. So I told you that this is basically all using Git history and repo history. But what's cool is this is derived from the Software Heritage Archive, which is arguably the largest public archive of human produced software source code accompanying with development history. So basically saying, yeah, this is how it was put together and we have all of this in history, thanks to the Heritage Foundation. And some of you might be asking, what is Big Code? So Big Code is an open science collaboration led by Hugging Face and ServiceNow that basically wants to be another entity producing open source and open machine learning models, basically for coding. So the idea is that um, we don't have this all get stuck in Google or Meta, and we have open representations of how this all works. What's also cool right now is there's actually a VS Code extension that you can use with StarCoder right now. I'm gonna make a separate video about how you can install that. And what's also cool is now there's a Big Code Models leaderboard. And since StarCoder was launched so recently, it's still working its way up this benchmark. But yeah, what's cool here is this is a breakdown of some common languages like Python, Java, JavaScript, and C++. So obviously CodeFuse DeepSeq 33B is still the highest here. But as I've been watching, StarCoder 2 15B has been quickly ascending in the ranks, especially as new challenges are added and RLHF and sort of synthetic feedback from these benchmarks is slowly falling out, um, showing StarCoder reaching the top. So what's curious is you can see how honest big code is here because even with a benchmark that they run, their own model isn't at the top yet. What's also cool is there's actually a breakdown for external evaluation, instruction tuned, and base model. And I will say, generally, I look at these benchmarks and I'm impressed when base models score higher than instruct tuned or externally evaluated models. So I'm curious, 
Do any of you guys use GitHub Copilot on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you use something local uh, like with MLX? Do you use these models like you maybe used to use Stack Overflow? Do you think no one should have them? Do you think students shouldn't have them? Please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to make another video showing how to use this with VS Code and Zed, two great text editors. But um, yeah, so as always, I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.